Thank you for joining us for Spiritual Perspective. I'm Carlton Duck, pastor of Gethsemane Baptist Church, and this program, Spiritual Perspective, is a ministry of reaching out to you to encourage you in the work of the Lord. Hi, everyone. So glad that you've joined us on the program and we're dealing with today. We're going back to the book of Nehemiah. And if you'll recall what happened in the book of Nehemiah about the rebuilding of the walls, the rehanging of the gates, and how that Nehemiah was such a great leader and God mightily used him. But there was something going on here for Nehemiah. He was facing some difficulty. He was facing warfare, threat, challenges. Kind of sounds like life in the 21st century, doesn't it? Kind of sounds like some of the things that we go through. You know, we are in a battle. But friend, we're not in a battle fighting to win. Our victory has already been won by the Lord Jesus Christ. And thank God we are already on the winning side. Let me show you why I say that. The book of Romans chapter 8 says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Aren't you glad that today we are already on the winning side and God's got it all taken care of? Sure, we may have some battles, but the war has been won. Sure, we may go through some trials, but you know, God's with you because he said he's your refuge, your strength, and your very present help. He's the rock that you're built upon, and your life today is secure in. Read Psalm 61. Wow, that's some good reading that will really bless you. We today are in Christ, and Christ is in us. And I'm glad today, if God then be for you, who can be against you? Thank the Lord we have that victory. Well, we're going to be talking about that in a few moments, but I just want to take a couple seconds here and talk about this coming Lord's Day. You know, we are fastly approaching... Father's Day, June the 20th, here at Gethsemane Baptist, and we'd love for you to come every day. Every man will get a special gift that Sunday, and uh, we will look forward. That's in the 930 and the 1130 service, and we just hope that you can come and be a part of the big celebration on Father's Day here at Gethsemane Baptist. But this coming Lord's Day, it's going to be an exciting day. We always look forward to proclaiming the message of God's Word. And you can be in the music that is impactful in such a positive, uplifting, and encouraging way. You can also uh, be greeted by kind, friendly, and warm people that care about you and are genuine in their care. That church really has the reputation of being a very exceedingly friendly church. And you're going to find that. Listen, people get up and give you their seats if you want, if you want that place. They're just that good here at Gethsemane. You'll find a beautiful facility that we worship in, and you'll find, indeed, Jesus is honored in this place. Come worship with us at Gethsemane Baptist Church. Our location is so easily found. We're one block off of Lakeside Drive. That's Route 221, and we're near the main entrance to the University of Lynchburg. And I just know that you're going to be blessed by coming to GBC, Gethsemane Baptist Church. In our services... There's another element that is really neat, and we've been doing this since, uh, of course, we, when we had drive-in church for 12 weeks last year, and uh, we provided our kids with what is called the Kitty Care Kit, and we've continued that because of the monumental success that it's brought to the kids and the blessing that it is. They get all types of things in this kit, and they, every kid, teenager, whatever, gets one every Sunday. I believe the adults would like to get them too, but we're not going to do that. But anyway, we just are very excited about that great ministry that God is mightily using. So bring your family. We are family-oriented church, and whether you're single or married, it makes no difference. We will treat you with the highest respect, and you will be loved and appreciated here at Gethsemane. Now, one final note I want to bring to your attention that uh, maybe you are not seeing and you're missing that is a great blessing. Right now, we're not having Wednesday night services, and uh, we will hopefully resume those somewhere in August, later in August, if things continue to improve as far as this uh, virus issue that we're facing. So we'll just have to see on that. We're not rushing into it. I know many churches have just 
open the churches up. They're doing all these things, and that's their decision. We're just still exercising some precaution. We still fog. We're still doing the issues and the things that provide you a safe environment. And so that way you have confidence when you come here that you indeed can come into a church where it has been clean and fogged and safe to come into. So doing that, what we're doing on Wednesday nights at present, we're doing a program, a live feed on my Facebook page, Carlton Duck, and we have at five o'clock a program called Topic Talk, and we deal with different subjects. Last week, I dealt with the subject of why do people suffer, and there's a difference between pain and suffering, and so I dealt with that. You can actually go to my Facebook page and watch that right now. How did I get to your Facebook page? There's several ways. You can request to be on my Facebook page, or you can go to a uh, uh, website, alivegbc.com, and at the top, you just click on uh, Carlton Duck, or Facebook, rather, and you'll go directly to it, and you can look at all the programs and the things that we're doing here at Gethsemane. So 5 o'clock is our topic talk on Wednesday night, and it's available throughout the week that you can watch it. And then I come back at 7 with a time that we call Before the Throne. And it's a season of prayer. It's a season that I give you a little devotion. And then we pray. All the requests that I have received on Facebook over the last several days, Monday and Tuesday, and into Wednesday, then I take those and pray over them. And it's a great blessing. So all that said, it's available. Get involved in Gethsemane Baptist, and I believe your heart will be mightily blessed. For the sake of time, we're not going to read the 11 verses in chapter 1 of Nehemiah, but we're talking today about some issues. And, you know, we can find certain things that is said in the scriptures. It says here uh, in verse 8, Remember, I beseech ye the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, If ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad uh, the nations. And then he goes down in verse uh, verse 10 and he talks about, now these are, the, these are thy servants and thy people whom thou hast redeemed by thy great power and by thy strong hand. Now, you know, first, some history here behind the book of Nehemiah as we look here and see exactly what God is trying to tell us. The book of Nehemiah was written by Nehemiah, and this is sometime between 445 uh, and 425 B.C., before Christ. And for what reason was the book of Nehemiah written? Well, alongside the book of Ezra, if you'll recall that, it records the fulfillment of God's promises. And I'm glad that God's a promise-keeping God. And it was to restore Israel uh, to her land after the 70 years of exile in Babylon. So the warning to Israel as a nation had been basically around for some time. But they came, it really came to a head around 605 BC when the prophet Jeremiah spoke to the nation. You know, God has always given a voice to speak his word. And we need to heed the word of the Lord, don't we? We need to heed the message of God's word today. So history records that in 6, uh, 586 BC, the prophecy of Israel really the Israel's downfall came exactly as Jeremiah had predicted. So in this siege and destroy, we understand the plan uh, for Jerusalem was destroyed. And of course, after this period, some, some of the uh, exiles returned to Jerusalem. But being a city without walls of uh, protection, the Jewish the Jewish remnant basically were always at the mercy of their enemies. I'm glad that our walls are continu continually before the Lord, as Isaiah said, and I'm glad his presence is with us at all times. So the book of Nehemiah starts at this point with Jerusalem basically without walls, and Israel is in ruins. You know, today we look at the condition of the hearts and lives of mankind. And today we see destruction. We see people wasting their lives on drugs and alcohol and sex and money and everything that you can think of. 
people have no consideration. And you know, I heard recently a candidate that was running, that is running for the Lieutenant Governor of Virginia and was talking about uh, the issues about, you know, you, you've heard that phrase, you're in my thoughts and prayers. And this particular uh, individual is running. He said, thoughts and prayers have not worked. Well, let me tell you something. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person will avail much. And whether he believes that or not, the fact is today, God is a prayer answering God. And you look what God has done for Israel. All right, let's lay that aside a moment. Look what God has done for you and I. I've seen God answer prayers. I've seen God heal. I've seen God deliver. I've seen God save. I've seen God provide. I've seen God do miraculous things. Let me tell you what, don't tell me that prayers don't work. They do work. And when God's people will focus on the Lord, we can see God's hand at work today. So looking at this, here's some types and prayers uh, in Nehemiah. And I want to give you more than just a history lesson tonight or on this program. But I, I, I don't know what time you're watching. It may be at night, maybe in the evening, maybe in the morning. But the fact is, there, there's more to see here than just what we see that meets the eye. Uh, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit does work mightily and gloriously in our lives, we find that God has placed within the book of Nehemiah some key characters and events that we need to take note of that will help us in our walk with God, that reveal some things concerning our walk, and we are in warfare as Christians. So we need the admonishment and instruction of God's Word. Well, what are three basic deadly enemies that we need to overcome? Satan, the world, and our own sinful nature. So those things are all working against us. So, you know, so many times we say, well, Satan's doing this and Satan's doing that. He'll only do what you'll open the door and let him do. And my friend, listen, I heard the old saying, and I've used it before myself. If Satan is riding your back, take the saddle off. You don't have today to entertain him today. Nehemiah is facing three primary enemies, Sanballat, Tobiah, and Geshem. And so you look at this, we see some things happening. First, the wall. In the natural sense, the, the wall surrounded Jerusalem. Well, you know, and I know the purpose of the wall and what the wall was to do and the gates, they served Jerusalem. Well, the wall kept the wrong people out. And the gates, of course, let the right people come in. So therefore, today, they served a purpose. Your life and mine serves a purpose. We need to shut the door of our life to that that seeks to destroy us and pull us down and defeat us. We need today to let the Lord, we are surrounded. You, you know, uh, if you look back at the book of Job, when the very first chapter, when Satan came to God and he accused Job and he said, you know, you have a hedge around him. And that hedge was representative of the spirit and the power of God and the protection that God provides. You may not physically see it and tangibly you be able to touch it, but I'm telling you today, you as a child of God, you today are surrounded by God's presence today and the spirit of God lives within you and no weapon that is formed against you, as Isaiah said, can prosper. So consider these walls, what these walls represent to us. Well, the walls represent certainly as salvation, specifically today, the power today that we've been delivered from, and that's sin. And I'm glad today that, that Jesus today has won the victory over our sin and has given us the glorious promise and hope today that we have in him. So you, you know today there are consequences to sin because sin comes to destroy you. But Christ came to redeem you. So first salvation, and then there's something else that happens here. Not only in salvation, but salvation then brings about something that today you should have in your life that is not controlled by a pandemic or anything else. It's controlled today by the Spirit of God that lives within you, and we should have praise. You know, when you think of the wall, that needed to be rebuilt, it reminds us that there are uh, there must be a separation between God's people and the world. Well, the Word of God says, Come out from among them, be ye separate, saith the Lord, touch not the unclean thing. And until Jesus really occupies your heart 
your life and realizing this, the heart that is open to receive what God wants to do in us. You need to shut the door of your heart to the things of the world. And today you need today to realize that you have a wall of protection around you and you've got one living within you that's far greater than any force that you'll ever face in this world. Then he talked about the gates. You know, he talked about the gates now that you are catching the flow of this study that I'm trying to bring to you. We've got to see what the gates then represent. What do they really bring to us? Well, the gates represent entrance into the Lord's presence. You come into the Lord's presence in salvation, and you're sealed unto the day of redemption. Now you have access to God. And when you have access to God, then you have access to his favor, his blessings, and his bounty. And so you experience the Lord and you realize you can enter in and today you've got to then go into that straight gate and you've got to come to the narrow way and you've got to seek the Lord and you've got to keep him before you in all things that you're doing. So you've got to do that. I love the way that King David put it in Psalm 100 and verse 4. He says, "In into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. My friend, listen today. I know that we're in a lot of craziness, but we still are to be thankful people. We don't have to wait till November and a turkey on the table for us to be thankful. Every day is a day of thankfulness that we can have in God's presence. And to come into his courts to praise him. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. You and I today are to praise him, to worship him, to thank him, to live for him. And I'm going to tell you, the more you live for him, the more thankful that you'll have in his presence and the more praise you will offer to him before his throne. So there again, I want you to note, if today you enter through these gates to reach today, to come to this place of praise, you realize something mightily will happen in your life today. And, and I'm glad that Jesus today is worthy of our praise and worthy of our glory and worthy of our honor today. Let me tell you something, friend. What about the character? You look at the book of Nehemiah. What or whom do they represent? The characters there. You find that Nehemiah, Nehemiah is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was a way maker. And our Christ our Savior, our Lord, our Jesus, he made a way where we had no way. He took on the devil, the world, the flesh, and everything that was against us. And he went to the cross. He died there, purchased our redemption. Then in turn, he gives us eternal life with him. And he is our Savior. He is our Lord. He is our Master. He is our everything today. And I'm so glad you know, Nehemiah's name, you know what it means actually? It means Yahweh comforts. And Jesus said in John 14 and 18, he says, I will not leave you comfortless. I'll come to you. And that's a comfort to our hearts. If I enumerated how many times God has comforted me, I couldn't do it. There's been case after case, place after place, situation, you name it, but it's he who comforts our hearts today. In everything that Nehemiah does, we see the attitude and the action of a man who's alive to God. And we have to be too. See, God's just not a Sunday God. God's in every moment, every breath of your life, God. And he's there for you today. Secondly, you see there's the three enemies that Nehemiah faced. Sanballat, his name means hated uh, in secret. And he possessed a lot of influence. He had a lot of power. Then Sanballat stands for what? He stands for the biggest enemy today that really hates God and hates God's people. And that's Satan. He's your arch enemy. He's not your friend. You know, you may think, well, the devil cares for me and all this. He doesn't care a thing about you. He wants to pull you right into the same hell that he is going to. And today you need to divorce yourself from him. And you can only do that through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ today. And then there was Geshem. And realizing that Geshem means physical, tangible, or material. And there's a lot of things in the world that's trying to pull us away from God. 
materialism, material wealth, material enticement, all these things of the world that want your attention. Well, you know, you can take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Amen. Because the things of this world, I want you to get this. The things of this world are temporal. This life is temporal. You're not going to live in this flesh forever. Remember when you was a child and now you've gotten older and it's a continual process until you die. And you know, that's a part of it. We don't last in this flesh forever. But hallelujah, we are going to live somewhere forever. And if you're a Christian, you're going to live in God's presence. And what a glorious day that shall be. Don't, well, Jesus put it this way. He said, lay not for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So what's your treasure? If it's not Jesus, you've got the wrong treasure. And then we look at other characters, Tobiah, his name you know, the name Tobiah actually means Jehovah's good, but ironically, it carried the symbol of the enemy of the flesh. And so every one of these instances, there's a lot of people who say they're godly, but you know what? Their true colors are opposite. They can be godly on Sunday and be the biggest heathen on Monday. Folks, you're just as godly on Monday as you are on Sunday. As a matter of fact, you should be godly every day in your walk and you're concentrated living for Christ. And today you should be, yes, steadfast, unmovable, and always abounding in the work of the Lord. You've got to understand there's a, there's a nature of the fall. And so the book of Nehemiah begins where any true salvation experience or any true revival of the Spirit of the Lord in the heart of a person has to start. What a realization today of the true spiritual condition of mankind. The only hope for this world that is caught up, consumed, and is being destroyed by sin is today what Christ can do for you. Only he today can turn your life around. Only he today can give you hope. And realizing today that you may be living in sin now, your life may be sinful. You may have never been saved. Maybe today you have been saved, but you have fallen back into that vice of sin. And today the world has just pulled you right back in. Well, did I lose my salvation? No, you didn't. But there's something inside of you that's saying you're not living right. It's something that's convicting you. There's something today that's bringing shame. There's something today that's showing you're not where you should be. And you feel bad about that. And you feel remorseful about that. That's the Spirit of God speaking to you. What do I do about it? Confess your sins. And he said, I will forgive you. And he will restore you. And today you have not lost your salvation. You may have lost the joy of your salvation as David did, but you have not today. You can't pluck yourself out of the hand of God. So therefore today, God wants you to come out from all that mess of the world and today be separate and identify yourself with the things of God. You and I know today that every person is born a sinner in this world. We're all spiritually dead, but there's only one that can change that. There's only one today that can remedy that. And so like Israel was in Nehemiah's day, so are we in the world today. And so therefore, you've got to look at your life. How are your walls today? How are your gates? How is your attitude towards God? How is your living for Him today? How separated are you? Can you be in church this Sunday? Can God can't well preach out? You know, I just got so much going on. Folks, you find all the excuses, but let me ask you one question. Lay me aside. What are you going to say to God when you stand before him? And you will. Are you going to tell him, well, I just didn't have time. You know, we had this and that and the other going on. And I was tired. I worked all week. And we just conjure up every excuse that we can. I heard it said a long time ago, all an excuse is is a glorified lie. And we can do anything that we want to do. Now, if it means getting out that grill on Sunday afternoon and firing it up and getting those steaks and burgers and dogs on there and doing all of that and hanging out around this and that and the other and doing what we want to, oh, we can do that. 
But we can't give God an hour on Sunday. We can't open the Word of God and read it. We can't spend time with our family and talk about the things of the Lord. We give you an opportunity every Wednesday at 5 o'clock for you and your family to be encouraged and strengthened in topic talk. And we deal with topics that are applicable to life situations that everybody is facing today and how that you can learn to have victory in your life. Why don't you turn the news off? Why don't you turn off the cartoons and turn off all the sitcoms and all the sporting events and plug into something today that will make a change in your life and your family? And today, start being the people that God has called you to be in your family. I'm glad today we are in warfare, but I'm glad today that if we will put our confidence in the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord is with us to deliver us and to bring us through whatever we're facing. And that battle, our war, has already been won. Focus on Jesus. I'm not going to stand here and tell you you won't go through times of difficulty and challenge, but if you will keep your focus on the Lord, you will come through what you're facing, and you'll be stronger and better in your Christian walk than you've ever been before. I promise you that on the authority of God's Word. So today, as we conclude, I certainly enjoyed being with you today on spiritual perspective and realize prayer is a good solution today to rebuild the gates and to re, uh, uh, rebuild the walls and to rehang the gates of your life. And make prayer then a priority. Spend time with your family. Spend time with God before you pull your head tonight. And watch God do a mighty work. And when you awaken in the morning, take a few moments to thank the Lord for another day he's graced you with. Thank you tonight for tuning in. I'm Carlton Duck, and I'm pastor of Gethsemane Baptist Church. And this program is one of the many programs that we produce to bring to you to encourage you spiritual perspective. Come worship with us this Sunday. I'd love to see you 930, 1130, Kitty Care Kids for Teens and Kids. And we're located at 411 Blue Ridge Street in Lynchburg, Virginia, a beautiful worship facility kind, friendly people that will welcome you and will be so glad to see you. And you will be blessed with the glorious, impacting, uh, God-magnifying music that will bless your heart and the powerful message of God that will transform and change you. We're right now in a study in the book of Joshua, and it is powerful what God is doing. So come see us at Gethsemane Baptist Church, and be sure to check us out on our website, and that's AliveGBC.com. We're praying for you, and remember, He will give you a spiritual perspective. Just look to Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. God bless you. Thank you.